Right then, big 380. First job I'm gonna do before I start it is change this exhaust pipe piece here. See how flexy bit's gone. <clears throat> That's first job. Um, and then we'll run it a little while and it's getting a full service. Everything's getting changed. Um, and then once that's done, we'll run it up, give it a burnout and hopefully that error code will disappear now that it's got full exhaust going through the system. That's the plan anyway. We do have question mark over the integrity of the rail pressure relief valve. But when I ran it as much as I dared to the other week, it seemed okay. But I didn't want to get it roasting hot and melt any wiring in here or do any damage. So that's what we're going to do. I'm not joking, that took a lot more fitting than I expected it to. What a fight I've had with that. Good night. Anyway, you plug that temp sensor back in now. Don't me wait. Um, done now, so I'll kill it up, get the engine oil warmed up. Um, we'll have it serviced. Right, that's best part of 40 litres of engine oil out of it. Final drives have drained, that'll be about 8 or 9 litres maybe. Obviously I've taken a drain. I've also, I've already taken one dra drain tray away off it. It's pretty black but it doesn't actually smell too bad. I thought it'd be really pungent but it isn't. Um, all's going well, I'm just doing my fuel filters. Let's check the underside of here while you're here, see if you can see any muck underneath that red flap, it looks all right. I think someone's had these pipes off because it's obviously marked. That nut there is slightly rounded. That looks really clean, so I think it's had a new one of these on just recently. I do, I do. Anyway, I'm just pottering away with it. It's just a service, isn't it? So. Yeah, I'm pleased I'm in here anyway. It is pouring it down out there. All right, I'm just about finished in here. Um, the only thing I'll show you is the pilot filter. See how sort of well it's holding the oil. I would say that should help the um, filter block light that's on the dashboard when you first start it up and then it kind of flickers as the machine warms up hopefully that'll help the dash 3's always kind of warned you that this filter was blocked even after you'd serviced it to be honest with you the oil that came out of it was creamy is how I would describe it you can see it in the glass over here I'll just show you Not what you want your hydraulic oil to look like, is it? <laughs> um, we're not changing the hydraulic oil today, but you might do it yourself. We'll see. Um, okay. Um, run out of waste oil spare uh, storage, as you can see. That one is so full to the brim. And that one's just about the same. Still got the slew gearbox to drain out yet, so um, I'll chuck my engine oil into it. Then I'll have two empties. <laughs> just come to change the breather filter. I've literally just taken this off. <laughs> no breather filter in there. Why? I don't know why. <laughs> why would you do that to yourself? Why, why, why? I don't know why, I'm going to put one in it, because I've got one. Right. While I'm in here, I'm going to 
have a nosy over the fuel rail. See if I can see if it's had a new relief valve or not. Because the rail will be painted grey. Yes, it is. The rail's in a really bad bit on these. I've been underneath and rooted the breather pipe out through the bottom of the belly plate because it was sat on the belly plate and keep an eye on that. Um, the relief valve is there and that is original so I've got a feeling I'm going to come back tomorrow and put a new one in. Um, I'm pretty sure they're the same as the DLO6 engine just gonna at the other end there is the pressure sensor that plug there I'm just gonna unplug it make sure it's clean and the pins look tight because it's more so on the newer ones we've had to nip the pins up I've never really had to do it on an older engine like this first return filter out got that one there to do but Noticed on the top of here, there's some bits of ram seal and in there, some ram seal. That could have come from anything, that could have come from a, this is an ex-demolition machine, so it could have come off a, an attachment or it could be a ram on the machine away. Don't know. It's not causing any problems that I know of. I've just got a feeling with this machine we might be uh, visiting it. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. All I can do with that is clean it out. Um, yeah, and I've never seen one of those filters before. I've got a genuine filter in that side. And either that's been in there a long time and the paint's all washed off it or an aftermarket one but this rubber's all the glue that holds it down to come away look <laughs> joys okay under here let's see what we've got <laughs> i'm not i'm not a huge fan of the color of that i like i'm really not It's not quite as bad, this one. Mm, just a little bit of white seal down in the bottom corner. Get that clunked out. It's not gone. A bit of something on there. Don't drop that in the tank yet. I'll... Right, uh... I'll put you down, I'll just grab this tray. Oh God, um, <laughs> another 23 minutes, it'll be five o'clock and hopefully my phone will stop ringing. It has been non-stop this afternoon. <laughs> I can't get this air filter out of either. So I'm gonna try and, oh, I need a sharper blade. Cut a hole in it, I can get my hand in it. Pull, Jesus, why is that so tight? <laughs> dust everywhere right i'll put you down again all right there we go it looks a long way up doesn't it from down here um i'm just gonna give this a clean up and then i'll um i'll be able to start it up then and run it and while it's sort of warming up i'll fill the slew gear up from the pubs check for any error codes and we'll see what time it is i've still got a wipe controller to fit um, which is the back of the cab out job. So the hour meter down there is reading four and a half thousand hours. The DPF filter, which we never change unless there's problems. The DPF filter has done 6,685, which is probably more accurate for this machine, which is still quite low hours for a Dash 3 machine, I think. 
Engine you know oil breather, look. <laughs> Doesn't even have one, mate. <laughs> I'll reset that too. Okay, let's see if it starts. No, is the answer out? Right, go and pump that hand primer a bit. Bloody hell, that took some bleeding. <laughs> I thought I had it the first time. You know what I mean? When I put the filters on, I was fair confident I had it bled up and she'd kill it into life. Four goes, that. Hey, look. No engine management lights. That is a good thing. Um, I'll just run it at a high idle, sort of. 1400 maybe That'll do 1350 Better actually go and check my filters aren't leaking There's a good idea Al I think I know where those uh, Bits of seal are coming from How can I best show you? If I stand here like this. Can you see it moving or not? Anyway, I'll not be so cryptic. Seals in that are gone. That is moving at a fair rate, look. That's a big bugger to reseal, isn't it? <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> ah, great. Tell you what, that exhaust absolutely stinks as well. You know, see if you walk past a taxi rank and there's been cars sitting, you know, taxis sitting for ages. You smell the exhaust fumes. That's what it smells like. I was going to leave the engine running while I pump the oil into the hubs but I'm already starting to get a headache so I'm not gonna. Right, all oils are back in the machine. I'm just gonna, before I, thinking what I'm gonna do is I'll do a force regen. But before I do that I just want to make sure that this turbo return pipe isn't leaking oil still because the last thing I want to do is have this chopping away at 1800 rpm and this is pouring oil out so a quick look. Oh. I'm getting towards the end of my day. <laughs> oh man. Okay, I've um, checked the turbo pipe. It doesn't look at the moment like it's leaking. Um, so I'm going to fire it through a force region while I tidy up. 20 to 6 now. According to this, it's only got 3 grams in it, so it shouldn't take long. Um, so I'm going to do it. I am going to do it. I just need to get the temperature of the coolant above 68 degrees. So I'll just draw this dipper arm in a little while. It's done it, but it hasn't done it. and. Got to check engine light again. Uh. Well, six o'clock now. I think I'm going to come back to this tomorrow. At least I know now. I've been keeping an eye on the um, on the rail pressure, and the rail pressure seems to be stable. So at least I know I don't need to come back to this in the morning with a relief valve. I don't think I do anyway. Um, yeah, that engine protection. I need to sort that out. So, stay tuned. The differential, that engine management light came on fairly early in the, the region. Um, but it continued to region with that engine management light on. 
my mind is fried. The phone's been going too much today. <laughs> and um, I think I'll go to bed tonight, sleep on it, come back in the morning with fresh ideas. So I'll keep this video rolling and um, see you in the morning. Friday morning, we're back. Um, right, so I'm going to have a look at the differential pressure sensor down here. Um, now, as the machine did a region yesterday, these temperature sensors, so this is the DOC, DPF inlet is, I can see the wire for it, there, so it's about here. DPF outlet is over here. The temperatures were perfect, um, in my opinion, yesterday. We had about 350, 360 degrees here. We had about 600 degrees here, so we've got an efficient um, heat build-up. And then towards the end over here, we were about 580-ish uh, over here. Temperatures were stable. The error code that is coming up is that the DPF differential pressure rose above what was expected. And when I was looking at the deep differential pressure, it looked good. For the amount of soot that was in the machine, we only saw, was it three grams, something like that. The different, the, the, the reading, it wasn't even a bar, it was like 0 0.3 bar. So I've either got a bad differential pressure sensor, and it should be reading higher, um, or these rubber tubes, it's a really bad bit to show you. This rubber tube here, in fact, if I do that, that's better. This is the differential pressure pipe here, and then the other one goes to the other side of the DPF, and it's measuring basically the airflow from one side of the DPF and the other side of the DPF, and the difference in pressure is the pressure that you're seeing. So as this blocks up, there's less airflow this side than there is this side. Is that right? Yeah, because this will block up. This side will block up quicker than this side. You'd imagine. Pretty sure. Um, but what can happen, I've not really seen it, but I've heard about it happening, is these rubber tubes can build up with soot and actually block. So there's my differential pressure sensor. Um, like I say, we've got DPF inlet, DPF outlet. Pins look nice and clean. I was hoping to see like a crack in the pipework somewhere, but there isn't. Also, the pipes look reasonably clean inside. You're disappointing. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Right, I'll uh, I'll go and grab a new one out of the van and we'll swap it over. Okay, so I've been running it for 15 minutes or so now. I haven't got that uh, differential pressure fault any longer. It's all gone. However, I'm getting a real pressure fault still. Now the annoying thing is we don't have a relief valve in stock, which is super annoying. Because I would have just fired that in. Um, but I don't think it is that. Da, 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 fault codes. Maximum positive deviation of rail pressure exceeded is the error code. So what I've done is I've recorded the machine running uh, and loading the engine up. This is the, this is a graph showing the state of the metering unit, which is fairly stable. These little peaks and troughs is me loading the engine up and then letting it go again, loading the engine up, letting it go again. If we look at the rail pressure, get rid of that one. If we look at this rail pressure da, 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 here, Put it into a graph. Uh, 
again you can see here it's this is machine idling this is when I take it out of auto idle it goes up I've loaded the engine up it drops down loaded the engine up drops down loaded the engine up drops down it's all doing as commanded and that there oops how do you move that over that there is the sense drill pressure this here is the commanded rail pressure and you can see it's very similar it has this almost identical pattern I don't know why it's doing it if I flick this lever up load up the engine whilst driving it there it is let it go back down to idle Disappears again. Doesn't seem to affect the performance of the machine. So we'll have a read through the troubleshooting guide for this error. So maximum positive deviation of rail pressure exceeded. If the governor deviation of the rail pressure exceeds the calibrated value from the curve based on the engine speed and the set value of the CP metering unit reaches the upper limit the error will be detected it says it's going to give me a 25 or a 50 percent torque d-rate on the engine component location common rail cp pump and high pressure line this function is used for rail pressure monitoring during active pressure control by a metering unit Checklist. Check the leakage in the high pressure range. CP pump to common rail, common rail to the injector, any problem. Step two, check the injection nozzle stuck in open position, any problem. Check the harness for CP pump metering unit, any problem. Mm-hmm. So there's some things to go and look for but when I was down the back of the engine yesterday looking at that uh, rail pressure sensor um, there was no dampness down that side of the engine that I noticed right I'm being really really thick here really thick that error code's basically saying that the metering unit the high pressure fuel pump can't keep up with demand at high rpm why might that be? It's telling me that there's either leakage between the high pressure fuel pump and the rail or between the rail and an injector. What's in that system that's designed to blow off above a certain pressure to protect everything? The rail relief valve. What do we know has blown off 413 times the rail relief valve? <laughs> Stupid or what? So I'm just going to take the uh, rubber pipe, show you now. I'm just overthinking things, aren't I? That's my problem. Because uh, although we're not getting a maximum rail pressure reached error code, we might never do because that relief valve has been weakened 413 times and we know from yesterday that it hasn't been changed because it's got paint on it and when you get a brand new rail the rails aren't painted the whole rail's still painted the relief valve's painted I'm not really doing a good job of showing you that but what I'm going to do I'm going to take the rubber pipe off clamp it yeah. Bit close that but never mind 
I'm going to take the rubber pipe off, clamp it, start it, run it up to high RPM. Error code comes on. We don't want to see any fuel coming out the end of the rail. Okay, capiche, capiche. Okay. I'm not 100% sure whether or not I've managed to split this pipe. I've put a crack in it there, I think. But it's not the end of the world, it's a bit of rubber. Uh, where are you at? You're there. There's the end of the rail. Okay, we're gonna go and start it. It's gonna be really noisy in a minute and it's gonna be absolutely pouring out, isn't it? Yes. Overthinking. Sometimes I do that. <laughs> right, it's just idling at the minute. I might just go and have a look now because it's gonna be blummin' noisy in there when it's 1800 RPM. Right, I didn't even get a chance to get my phone out and show you because there's fuel everywhere up here now. So the answer is at idle. The uh, rail relief valve is indeed leaking and that's at idle. So at higher up, is that at about 750, 800 bar? That's leaking. So you can imagine at 1800 RPM, 1300 bar, it's holding on, but it's leaking, which makes that high pressure fuel pump work harder, which means that the uh, error code's coming on. Everybody happy with that? I'm happy with that. Well, happy. Uh, it's a conclusion to a question mark, isn't it? It's just blooming annoying that we didn't have one in stock because I've got one for a Perkins engine on the van. That's different. Uh, so there we go. Like I say, in fairness, we've never sold a relief valve out of Carlisle. So if ever I've fitted one in the last seven years of being at Gordon's, I've got it from Castle Douglas. And they've sold, what did he say? The lad at Castle Douglas stores said that it sold five in the last two years. So, yeah, there you go. Right. Um, I'm pretty sure I've knackered that rubber pipe, so I might just take it off and make a new one up. I'm sure I've got a bit of quarter fuel hose like that. That's my phone battery, uh, torch battery dying again. It gets charged for 10 minutes and then I need it again. Hey, I put a new rubber pipe on up there. So I'll roll that back up before I trip over it and swear. Um, yeah, there's absolutely no chance of touching this pipe without it breaking. So, that's in the bin. Always pays to carry fuel hose if you're new to being on the road or on the tools. Um, field service, out like that. Carry a good length of fuel hose. I've got a fuel hose here with a fitting on. I can literally pipe the machine, if I wanted to anyway, I could pipe the machine up. Um, to bypass fuel filters or go straight from the tank onto the pump, etc. Um, quarter hose, and this is three eighths, I think. Yeah, three eighths. But yeah, quarter hose for the mini diggers, and obviously rail relief, <laughs> rail relief pipes, and uh, three eighths hoses for the bigger stuff. Right. Um, so I know exactly what all's wrong with this now we need a relief valve that ram needs resealing that was curled all the way around there about 15 minutes ago um right only job left to do is wiper controller surely this has got to be straightforward there is a part of me that thinks it isn't gonna be but oh god i plugged that wiper back in didn't i so i'm gonna have to take all that cover off in there again Right, differential pressure sensor, done. Right, 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 right. Uh, I'll square up the tools first. I don't like to have a load of stuff scattered everywhere. I'm a bugger for being tidy like. Guarantee it, I'll be back in. In fact, I will need that one. Don't need that, don't need that. I will be back in here for something that I've just put away, I can guarantee you. Right. Don't need that either. Um, has anybody got any good 
links to socket rails because these metal ones are all right for a year or 18 months and then they just start when you use them obviously you're peeling them off aren't you so you bend them and then they start rattling about give me some good ideas please for organizing this lot <laughs> um what am i after now that that 10 mil phillips oh, i will need that actually i need a 14 deep socket that's about there i think that's 15 oh, that was right the first time and a 17 that's a 19 why did it go so far away from there right that's the three minutes of your life you'll never get back you're welcome okay wiper motor controller dead easy this is where oh. this is where all your controllers are start controller actually no that was a dc converter this is your wiper controller here now if you look at the new one there's a green dot on the plug there on the wiper motor there's a green dot as well so it is entirely possible to um, come to an old machine the wipers either not working or it's just working randomly and you change out the wiper motor for a new wiper motor you fit a non-green dot and you swap it with a green dot one the green dot wiper motor isn't compatible with the non-green dot <laughs> wiper controller and you'll have the exact same fault um, and you'll be thinking oh Christ what is it and then you'll get a new wiper controller and it'll have a green dot on it and you'll fit that and then you've got a pair then you see because you fitted a green dot wiper motor and you fitted a green dot controller however if you fit the new wiper motor and you go ah damn it new wiper motor hasn't fixed it so you just plug the old one back in must be the controller so you fit the new controller which will have a green dot on it and that green dot won't be able to control the non-green dot wiper motor okay that is vital information that maybe 0.01 percent of my audience will appreciate and value okay you're welcome <laughs> but i know that this wiper motor that i've got on this machine is a green dot so this should be compatible however i still need to take that cover off over there because i plugged that other plug back in capiche capiche now, again, this is, I'm only replacing this because I haven't done any troubleshooting, which perhaps I should have done. This is just purely experience. And uh, yeah, I've never had a problem with the button pad there, unless it doesn't light up. Um, it has either been the wiper motor or the controller or both. So, need two hands to get that slotted in hang on tell you what if i had a pound for every time i've dropped my phone into a deep dark dirty crevice on this machine i would have enough to buy myself some lunch today i've dropped it into the belly plate the oily yucky minging belly plate three times this phone um where else has it been dropped into it's been dropped in behind the back of the seat it's been dropped just on the floor. I can't keep hold of the damn thing. Right, sit that in there just out my way for now. So, <laughs> um, of all the jobs that I've not really overthought, of all the jobs on this machine that I've been probably overthinking the problem, this is the one that I've thought about the least. Mainly because it's uh, not an essential thing, is it? I mean, the wiper still works, it's just off the wrong button. But you can go and do a day's work without a wiper motor, can't you? Whereas the rest of these problems, still yet to find out what it's going to do about that ram. That's going to be a big tasty job, isn't it, resealing that? It is, it is. Um, not sure whether I'll come with the trailer, if it is to do. Not sure whether I'll come with the trailer and take it back to the workshop in case I need heat and things like that. Or whether I'll try and do it here. Uh, 
undecided on that one. But that is going to be a lump, that. That is going to be some blooming lump to split. It'll come apart all right, I would imagine, but it's just the weight of everything. Um, see, with like a 14 tonner ram, you can have another man and lift the cylinder, you know, lift the rod out of the cylinder yourselves without needing a forklift or something. I've done a couple in the woods actually where I've resealed that ram. Take an axle stand with you. Um, take the ram off and then put the ram in the H-link down there, sit it on an axle stand, then you've got your ram bench basically. Crack your nuts off, split the gland out and then just wiggle the, wiggle the rod out, bang some new seals in it and then like I say you've got a homemade ram bench but it's a bit different when you can't just maneuver without a machine. Right, can I do this from this little letter box position here? Whew. It's a two-hander, so we'll find out in a minute. Okay, honest truth, I haven't tried it yet. All I've done is turn the ignition on um, because I need to put the operator password in, so I don't want you to see that. The only job that I haven't thought about, I haven't given a second thought, let's see if it works. Oh, you dancer, it's a way I look. Stop, it stops. Ha! Huh. Absolutely amazing. Um, right, I'll get this cab put back together. Um, so, hour and a half day today. The reason for that is um, I have got to do some travelling to record a podcast. Um, the Professional Struggler was on it um, a while ago, a talking shop podcast. If you haven't listened to it, or they basically they film it on camera, um, and put it on YouTube so you can look up Talking Shop Podcast um, or you can listen to it on Spotify just search Talking Shop Podcast um, there will be a good I would say 20 to 30 episodes on there now I did start listening before you know uh, saw Chris go on it um, and it's, it's quite quite good it is um, a lot of the guests seem to be able to make the podcast last for about two hours so if you are going to listen to my podcast uh, when I do it it'll be best part of 15 minutes <laughs> everybody seems to have loads to talk about and uh, yeah that's the only thing I'm a bit nervous about is being able to talk about myself for however long um, so yeah it's nice to have been invited along to it um, they said that it was because some of my viewers had requested my attendance on it so that was you thank you very much um, I'm gonna go on a road trip this afternoon um, stay over and then uh, record the podcast tomorrow um, so yeah we'll see how that goes and um, yeah I'm kind of a big deal now you know I'm getting Getting uh, requests to feature in talk shows and, uh, you know, I'm going to use my head instead of switching you off. There we go. Yeah. I tell you, this time next year, we'll be millionaires. <laughs> right, I'll, um, I'll pack up. I need to speak to the customer about this machine. It's not really ready for a day's work. I don't want that ram to do much more as it is just now because those seals are away it won't be long before the pistons dragging up and down the cylinder if it hasn't already and uh, getting the seals done now is a difference of a couple hundred quid for a seal kit or big chunk of money for a new ram so i need to speak to him all right i'll uh, see you in the next one thanks for watching see you next week